All right, this section is all about algebraic expressions. So you're gonna have to write some based upon words and be able to simplify some algebraic expressions as well. So first one says a mathematical sentence containing one or more variables is called an open sentence. An example of this would be 3x plus 4. It's an expression or an open sentence. In a mathematical sentence stating that two algebraic expressions are equal is called an equation. So good rule of thumb, if there's an equal sign in the middle, it is an equation. If we have 3x plus 4 equals 17, we have an equation. All right, next section. You'll see some of these on your test as well, where they give you a written expression, you have to write it in algebraic terms. So first one says seven less than the number t. A lot of people have a difficulty deciding whether it is seven minus t or t minus seven. The one on the left is you're subtracting t, so that is t less than seven. That's not what we want. The one on the right is seven less than t. So make sure you know the difference between those two. We are subtracting seven, so it is seven less than t. Next one says the square of a number decreased by the product of five and the number. Well, let's call x the number, and let's go term by term. It says the square of a number, I've got x, and I'm going to square it. Decrease by, we're going to subtract, the product of 5 and the number. Product means I'm going to multiply 5 and the number, which we called x. And there's our expression. All right, let's go ahead and pause it, see if you can do these next two. Take a minute and see if you can do question two A and B. All right, this first one says the sum of two and a number is five. So the sum means we're adding two and a number, we'll call it x again, is, is equals five. And you could have also written this as x plus two equals five. Remember that is the commutative property when we're changing order. Commutative property of addition. Next one says you have 50 boxes of donuts and are eating 12 boxes a month. I don't particularly like this one, but this is what they were going for. All right, bottom half of this is all simplifying variables. We've got some substitutions to make over here. We know v is negative two and w is four. So let's see if we can make some substitutions here. We're gonna say this is negative four v. We know v is negative two plus three times w. We know w is four plus two v v is negative two and then don't forget about this part right here the negative five w and then see if you can simplify this we're going to start from the inside and go out so remember order of operations we need to start inside the parentheses first so we're going to start in here so three times looks like this is four minus four and negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. We can simplify this a little bit. This is 3 times 0 minus 20 or 8 minus 20 winds up being equal to negative 12. Alright again, see if you can do this next one. Go ahead and substitute all of those variables in for A and C respectively to see if you can simplify it. All right, I'm gonna substitute in here. C is negative one. A is four. B 
be careful here. There's two things you got to watch out for. You have to make sure you understand whether we're dealing with negative one squared or negative one quantity squared. Remember, order of operations, exponents comes first. So this is negative one versus this is a positive one. So just be careful here. This term is going to wind up being, we're going to subtract a positive one because we have that second situation. So let's simplify this. Negative one times negative one is a positive one. And one minus one is zero. All right, lastly, we're simply combining like terms here. I'm going to write this in descending order of exponents, meaning the highest exponents first. Looking at my x squared terms, 16 minus 3 would be 13 x squared. And then I have 5 x's. That is my expression. If you want to factor it, I think that is a good thing. Both of these have an x in common. And that would be a great final answer. All right, last one. Let's see what this one's a little bit trickier. I'm going to multiply out that numerator. I get 3a minus 3b all over 9. And this is 4 times b over 9. Now, all of these have the same denominator. Just like if I had 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths, I could write that as 2 plus 3 over 7 or 5 sevenths. Same thing holds true here. Because we have the same denominator, we can write this as 3a minus 3b plus 4b all over 9. And if we combine our like terms here, this becomes 3a negative 3b plus 4b would be a positive b all over 9. You can leave it this way or you can split it up. You could also write this as 3a over 9 plus b over 9 and reduce that 3 over 9. 3 over 9 is 1 third. Both of these are correct answers. And again, just make sure you recognize all we did is split that up and reduce. I would take either one of those answers.